All right, welcome back to IT Security Labs. And today I want to talk about Base64. What is Base64? What is Base64 used for? And how do we decode and encode things in Base64? By the time you're done with quick tutorial, you should be able to tell what Base64 looks like by just looking at uh, Base64 encoded data and also know how to use it. So I found this really nice uh, documentation on Base64. And when you talk about base64 data, it's just a string of similar binary to text encoding. Base64 is encoded data. It's not encryption, it's encoding. And with that, it's just a matter of representing binary data in ASCII string format that is translated into Redix64 representation. And we'll show you what that looks like in a little bit here. But the main reason why this is done is because base64 is used when moving data across a network and there's several ways why you would want to do that the best reason why you would want to do that is to make sure that the data remains intact without modification during transport that is a very important thing you don't want the data to change as it is moved across a network or sometimes you just want to hide base. so another main reason why people use base64 is so that they can actually store the data in the databases so here i have a database that we can try to sign into and i'll show you how the passwords are stored in this database. So let's do a show databases, use stuff. So here is a database, show tables. So if you're presented with a database and you check, oh, here's login and user. Select all from login. And you see, these people decided to keep their data in Base64 format. I'm going to show you how you can crack Base64 encoded data from a list. So you can make a list of all these and make a simple while loop and crack all of them at once without doing one at a time. And I'll show you a couple ways you can uh, crack this uh, data that is base 64 encoded. So this is one form of that. Another way is when you deal with web applications, sometimes when you are presented with the data, it's encoded. When attackers sometimes, when they're delivering their payload, if it keeps breaking through and it's getting modified, mo modified before it's read by the final destination, you can encode your data and then it reaches the other side uh, and then it gets decoded. That way it remains intact. So there's a lot of ways to use base 64 encoding. And like I said earlier, this is not encryption. This is just encoding that we did. And so far we have seen one use case for that. A really good room to do is from Try Hack Me. I highly encourage you to just go and complete this simple cryptography for dummies it will explain uh types of cryptography and also hashing and also then encoding and decoding so you know this is not hashing this is encoding and decoding so a good example from this try hack me uh cryptography for dummies you can see that it says encode the string in base 64 so this here all right so to encode in base 64 we just copy the text. We can go online. There are online tools out there. The most popular one I think you can find is base64encode.org. Just paste it there and say, hey, encode this. And right away, you will notice that it will give you the answer. This is encoded in base64. You can also do this from the terminal. But if you wanted to decode, for example, we can just say echo that and pipe it to base64-d. This is a local base 64 tool, and you see we now have the same exact text that we had earlier. If you say base 64-h, it will give you the help here. Like you can put minus D for decode, uh, ignore garbage, and other things. So you can do it either online or you can use your Kali Linux machine. If you ever see base 64 data, it doesn't have to be a single line. It could be a whole web page that is uh, encoded. You can try to decode the same way that I'm showing you here. Let's say we went to our database and we are given a list. So instead of picking one at a time and copying and say, let's go to the terminal and do an echo, paste, pipe, base, four minus D and get one result at a time. You have to do this five times. There's a better way you can do it which is uh, nicer. So right now I sh I'm showing you just a simple batch script. I named this one decoder.sh. You can just say for item in, then put each base 64 in a line, just like what I have here. Make sure to put this forward line here so that it's read uh, individually. 
So in, with each of these lines here, you can just do a do, then echo each individual one, pub it to base 64 minus D, then add the args. Args minus L1 says read this as one individual uh, line. So with this simple uh, base script, you can decode all these at once without wasting a lot of time. And this is uh, a second way to do it. So if I do I run my list decoder.sh, which is the same one that I just showed you, it will give you the results here. So we decoded all these with just a list that we had in here, decoder.sh. What if you just had all these hashes in a file, right? You can just do a simple loop as well without even creating a batch script. You can say while read line, then you can just echo each line, pipe it to base 64 minus D. Again, you need your args so that your args actually, you take input one at a time. You might have noticed that in my last video, I had this and I said I didn't, I didn't know how to fix it. So in my last video, this was my problem. Without args, this is what you get. It will give you as, a, as one line. So what you need to do is make sure you put args back in. And when you do, you get the same results. So you will notice that this here is going to give us the same results as .sh. Same exact results, just a matter of choice. So the biggest takeaway, what is the best, 60, best 64 and how do you decode it? Both you can use online tools or you can just use your terminal. Usually online tools are fast if you just have one thing to decode. The terminal is going to be faster if you have a lot of things to decode. So that was it. I hope this helps you as you develop your offensive security skills or even defensive skills just to know what Base64 is and also really make your life easier as you deal with Base64. Otherwise, that's it from me today. I hope to see you soon and thank you for watching.